Retrospectives are said to be one of the most important agile events. And if you're not continuously adapting and approving from actions from the retrospective, are you really being flexible? Are you really agile? Maybe you're just agile-ish. Let's talk about sprint retrospectives today, how you can use it in your team. I'll give you some practical advice, run through some, a retrospective mock retrospective for a team that you can be able to use. And also give you some practical advice to how to make it not boring and not mundane that this event tends to get and be. Excited for you to watch the next portion. Imagine you're part of a marathon relay team where the baton represents the project. Each time a runner finishes their leg, there's a brief pause to pass on the baton. This pause is crucial to reflect on the performance and make necessary adjustments for the next leg. In the world of Agile, this pause is known as the sprint retrospective. Moving forward, let's delve into the mechanics of a sprint retrospective. It is a gathering that takes place at the conclusion of every sprint within the Scrum framework. This gathering is a golden opportunity for the team to look back on the sprint that just ended and formulate a plan for enhancements to be implemented during the next sprint. It's like a team huddle where everyone discusses the highs and lows of the game, what worked and what fell short. The beauty of a sprint retrospective lies in its simplicity and effectiveness. It provides a platform for the team to discuss their experiences, share insights and collectively identify areas for improvement. It fosters an environment of learning and continuous improvement, which is at the heart of Agile. In essence, a sprint retrospective is your team's chance to pause, reflect, and improve. It's the heartbeat of Agile methodology. So why should a team take the time for sprint retrospectives? Well, think about that relay race again. The teams that consistently reflect and adjust their strategy are the ones that win the race, right? Sprint retrospectives are vital for continuous improvement. They are the cornerstone of creating an open culture where team members feel comfortable discussing their achievements, challenges, and ideas for improvement. I wanna thank everybody for making it this far in the video. Remember, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like this video, continues more content going forward. Now, let's get back into the topic. Now let's paint a picture. Suppose a team faced issues with meeting sprint objectives due to frequent changes in requirements. During the retrospective, they could identify this issue and devise a plan to manage requirement changes more effectively. By doing so, they set the stage for improved performance in the next sprint. That's the power of retrospectives. They turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones, fostering a cycle of growth and learning. Sprint retrospectives are not just about looking back, but also about looking forward and planning for success. Sprint retrospectives are a catalyst for positive change, enhancing the team's performance, collaboration, and overall success. The sprint retrospective is a powerful tool for improvement, but like any tool, its effectiveness depends on how you use it. To maximize the benefits of sprint retrospectives, they should be inclusive spaces where every team member feels secure expressing their thoughts. Implementing a structured format can keep discussions focused and productive, preventing the conversation from veering off track. Incorporate a variety of activities to encourage engagement and keep the process dynamic. These activities could include brainstorming sessions, open discussions, or even games designed to stimulate creative thinking. Following up on identified action items is crucial to the success of your retrospective. Assign responsibility for each action item to a specific individual or team, ensuring accountability. Then, in the next retrospective, check the progress of these action items. Remember, the goal of a sprint retrospective isn't to point out mistakes, but to learn from them and improve. It's about turning challenges into opportunities for growth and innovation. After all, that's what Agile is all about. So now it's time to put that practicality to the theory you just learned. And so this is a Confluence page. I'm using this to conduct a retrospective. Keep in mind that you can use other tools like Miro, and there's also tons of tools you can, you can Google and figure out what's the best for your team. But today I'm just gonna use Confluence since it's already in uh, the Atlassian suite. And so again, these are the top items I would look for in your retrospective to make it A plus and make your team high performing. So the first 
item here is don't record, right? Making sure everybody's invited as well. So this one is a, is a discussion that often gets dropped. And it's important to know that even though this gets dropped, how do you know you're not being as efficient with, within your team to deliver that product? And if you don't spend the time to actually look at internally what you've done, how are you supposed to get better? So some say this is actually one of the most important meetings, but it's often the one of the most first one that gets cut. So we'll go over this and make sure that we're capturing the goals of this. And so the second item I'll look for is make sure that this meeting is scheduled after the sprint iteration, demo and review, and before sprint planning. So remember, pull some feedback from stakeholders that also give you a 360 view, right? Other stakeholders you have internal, and now you can come to this meeting prepared. So that's the idea of that. And also before sprint planning, because if you have actions that you want to do or take, then you need to make sure it's in the planning, right? Otherwise something's gonna slip, right? You're just not documenting it. So really important. Also keep in mind that there's different formats, but use the, the items, the templates that are online in Miro, makes it more interactive. This one off, this meeting often gets very redundant and people just go through the motions, right? So important that you use different formats to making sure that you're, you're kind of spicing it up, you're changing it up with your team to make it different so they can be excited to come to this meeting. Uh, another item here is capture feedback and create action. So you can see here, I actually filled this out as a hypothetical situation. And we'll go over this as well. Um, and so what we'll do is actually go through some of these items. So here's a template that I pulled from Confluence. All of you already have something like this. I added some things that I look for. So you could see here that the, think the two things that are different are the sprint goals and sprint commitment. So these are two metrics I track, right? How do you get feedback fast and iterative with your team so they understand how are they doing so they can adjust? Without this information, it'd be tough for them to adjust because they don't understand what they did in the past. And so first thing, and most importantly, is the sprint goals. How did your team do against the sprint goals? You can see here I had three sprint goals. I said two out of three equals 66%. Obviously, you can see that there might be a better way to break this down to capture more of those items. You can see there's four user stories associated with this one and three with this one. So maybe you break it a little further. Uh, but also you can think about that when you're creating your sprint goals. It's making sure that we can check off what the team completed and you can see what percentage was complete. And so you can celebrate those, right? So making sure that it's not just looking at the bad, it's also looking at the good. Very important here. And then commitment to comp uh, completion to commitment. So this is something that's already pulled within Jira. And if you go here in the expand, you go to reports. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. If you go into your Jira project here, I can get to it and you can take a look on the left-hand side, you can see there's reports here, right? So this is where you can pull those metrics at. They're in these reports. You don't have to generate this yourselves as long as you're starting and starting the sprint at the right time from when those stories are refined and have scope to it before you start the sprint, right? So really important is a velocity chart. That's what that's for. Uh, that's another important metric for me, right? Because it you want to reduce volatility right when you're planning so that's why i track it is to say when i'm creating a roadmap or a plan there is some level of risk in here and something unknowns and so as long as we're consistent though i can be confident that we can make those timelines so that's what it's for and something i track but you can track whatever metrics work best for your team another thing here you can see that we filled out this retrospective this is one that's already out of the box and that again going back to what i said i created an action item. really important here and you can see here Communicating when, when the pull requests are re ready for review. So with this, I took an action to say install Slack repository integration to notify the team when the PR is ready for review. So that might be actually a value added action, right? It takes manual work from the team that does it automatically when you send or create that PR. So again, help your velocity, right? You're reducing time from team, all the team members doing that. This is why retrospect is important because there's things like this you can capture. And yes, we're going to uh, talk about next steps for this. So going back to here, right? Going back to this checklist that I created that for that leader, that scrum master to go through to making sure we're accomplishing all the main goals and getting the value out of retrospectives is that you create the backlog items for one sprint. So for example, if this is the action I created, remember you can do that trick that I showed in another video, you can highlight it and go create issue. You can create it right in the backlog, but remember you don't want to boil the ocean or you don't want to make something so large that it feels overwhelming for the team to actually take it into the sprint. And so what you should do is there might be an end goal that's really large and really big, and maybe you chunk it out, right? Maybe you separate it in 10 different chunks to get to there. And you put that in the backlog. 
and you put that as an action and you you continuously chip away at it at each retrospective because there might be other work competing and so it all depends but that's what i would do to kind of take it a little uh step by step smaller chunks um and then get to the end goal without making it overwhelming or pushing work that maybe stakeholders are, are pursuing or want or customers that are really high value right uh, and I go over this, make sure you go over the sprint goals and, and, and commitment metrics because that, that might feed it back into the retrospective of what we can do to improve. Make sure your time boxes event important as well. We don't want to spend all day, but we want to spend some time on here. So I've seen 30 minutes to an hour in between that time frame usually are is uh, the sweet spot, the one that works the best. And then remember, you have to celebrate as well, right? Your accomplishments and wins. This is often for, forgotten. So give kudos, give shout outs to the teams here. So... You can making sure you're not just looking at the bad, you're also looking at the good because there's a lot of things that the team is doing and working with the situations they have. So this is my retrospective and some of the top points for you to have your team go through to making sure that you're accomplishing the value out of this meeting. And remember overall, go over the top again, from top to bottom of what you need to do to making sure that this retrospective goes well is don't record this meeting. That's important, right? Make sure everyone's invited. You don't record it just because people are more honest, it seems like, when they don't record it and feel like they're they're um, getting interrogated or anything, you wanna make sure it's very relaxed. And the most important thing is they're honest. And so usually I found that recording doesn't work, but again, you can use what works best for your team. Make sure it's scheduled after the review demo and before sprint planning. So you can add it into the sprint and capacity, use different formats, keep it interesting, capture feedback, create actions, create backlog items, that can be completed in one sprint, time box the event. And then remember, celebrate your accomplishments. Your team did a lot that sprint. So if you like this video, please subscribe. Please like this video for more content. If you want some checklists like this, please contact me. It's making sure you can use this to make your team an all-star team today.